The Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis Part 37 Book 4, the Twelfth Chapter The communicant should prepare himself for Christ with great care. The Voice of Christ I am the lover of purity, the giver of all holiness. I seek a pure heart, and there is the place of my rest. Prepare for me a large room furnished, and I, with my disciples, will keep the Passover with you. If you wish that I come to you and remain with you, purge out the old leaven and make clean the dwelling of your heart. Shut out the whole world with all the din of its vices. Sit as the sparrow lonely on the housetop and think on your transgressions in bitterness of soul. Everyone who loves prepares the best and most beautiful home for his beloved, because the love of the one receiving his lover is recognized thereby. But understand that you cannot, by any merit of your own, make this preparation well enough, though you spend a year in doing it and think of nothing else. It is only by my goodness and grace that you are allowed to approach my table as though a beggar were invited to dinner by a rich man, and he had nothing to offer in return for the gift but to humble himself and give thanks. Do what you can, and do that carefully. Receive the body of the Lord, your beloved God, who deigns to come to you, not out of habit or necessity, but with fear, with reverence, and with love. I am he that called you. I ordered it done. I will supply what you lack. Come and receive me. When I grant the grace of devotion, give thanks to God, not because you are worthy, but because I have had mercy upon you. If you have it not, and feel rather dry instead, continue in prayer, sigh, and knock and do not give up until you receive some crumb of saving grace. You have need of me. I do not need you. You do not come to sanctify me, but I come to sanctify you and make you better. You come to be sanctified and united with me, to receive new grace and to be aroused anew to amend. Do not neglect this grace, but prepare your heart with all care, and bring into it your beloved. Not only should you prepare devoutly before communion, but you should also carefully keep yourself in devotion after receiving the sacrament. The careful custody of yourself afterward is no less necessary than the devout preparation before. For a careful afterwatch is the best preparation for obtaining greater grace. If a person lets his mind wander to external comforts, he becomes quite indisposed. Beware of much talking. Remain in seclusion and enjoy your God, for you have him whom all the world cannot take from you. I am he to whom you should give yourself entirely, that from now on you may live not in yourself, but in me, with all cares cast away. The Thirteenth Chapter With all her heart, the devout soul should desire union with Christ in the sacrament. The Disciple let it be granted me to find you alone, O Christ, to open to you my whole heart, to enjoy you as my soul desires, to be disturbed by no one, to be moved and troubled by no creature, that you may speak to me and I to you alone, as a lover speaks to his loved one, and friend converses with friend. I pray for this. I desire this, that I may be completely united to you 
and may withdraw my heart from all created things, learning to relish the celestial and the eternal through Holy Communion and the frequent celebration of Mass. Ah, Lord God, when shall I be completely united to you and absorbed by you, with self utterly forgotten? You in me, and I in you. Grant that we may remain together. You in truth are my beloved, chosen from thousands, in whom my soul is happy to dwell all the days of her life. You are in truth my pledge of peace, in whom is the greatest peace and true rest, without whom there is toil and sorrow and infinite misery. You truly are the hidden God. Your counsel is not with the wicked, and your conversation is rather with the humble and the simple. Oh, how kind is your spirit, Lord, who in order to show your sweetness towards your children, deign to feed them with the sweetest of bread, bread come down from heaven. Surely there is no other people so fortunate as to have their God near them, as you, our God, are present everywhere to the faithful, to whom you give yourself to be eaten and enjoyed for their daily solace and the raising of their hearts to heaven. Indeed, what other nation is so renowned as the Christian peoples? What creature under heaven is so favored as the devout soul to whom God comes to feed her with his glorious flesh? O oh, unspeakable grace! O oh, wonderful condescension! O oh, love beyond measure! singularly bestowed upon man. What return shall I make to the Lord for this love, this grace so boundless? There is nothing I can give more pleasing than to offer my heart completely to my God, uniting it closely with His. Then shall all my inner self be glad when my soul is perfectly united with God. Then will He say to me, if you will be with me, I will be with you. And I will answer him, Deign, O Lord, to remain with me. I will gladly be with you. This is my one desire, that my heart may be united with you.